Agamacing! In our last video, we learned the biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. In this video, we are going to discuss the different ecological relationships that exist in an ecosystem. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment hashtag Agamacing. Let's go! Ecological relationships describe the interactions between and among organisms within their environment. Interactions and relationships exist in an ecosystem in search of food, shelter, and protection. In a community, interactions within and among the population may have important influences on the death and birth of the organisms and in turn on the population's growth and size. These interactions may have positive, neutral, or even negative influences on the interacting population. One of the interactions that occur in our ecosystem is symbiosis. It is the close interaction between two or more organisms of different biological species. There are three types of symbiotic relationships, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Mutualism is a symbiotic relationship wherein a species benefit from each other's interaction. In mutualism, the interaction of two species is double positive because they both benefit from each other. A flowering plant and a bee show this type of interaction. Can you explain how they benefit from each other? Correct! The bees fly from flower to flower in search of nectar which they transform into food which benefits these insects. On the other hand, whenever the bees land on a flower, particles of pollen stick to their body. Such particles are transported to other flowers resulting in plant pollination. In this mutualistic relationship, the bees get to eat and the flowering plants get to reproduce. Next is commensalism. It is a type of symbiotic relationship that happens when one organism benefits from the interaction and the other is unaffected. It is neither harmed nor benefited. The interaction of two species in commensalism is positive-neutral, since one species benefits and the other is not affected. An example of this is the interaction of an orchid plant and a tree. The orchid attach itself to a tree without harming it. The tree provides a place for the orchid to live. It also benefits by getting adequate sunlight. The orchid depends on the tree for mechanical support but not for the nutrients. Hence, the tree is not affected. In commensalism, there are two roles played by the species, a commensal and a host. The commensal is the one that gains benefits like nutrients, shelter, support, or locomotion from the host which is not affected. The commensal relation is often between a larger host and a smaller commensal. In the orchid tree relationship, what is the role of the orchid? How about the tree? Correct! The orchid is the commensal and the tree is the host. The next symbiotic relationship is parasitism. Parasitism happens when one organism benefits and the other is harmed. Their interaction is positive-negative since one species benefits and the other is harmed. The organism that benefits from this relationship is called a parasite, and the organism that is harmed is called a host. The parasite is usually smaller than the host. The parasite may live inside the body of the host just like that of the tapeworms inside the intestines of the cow. The tapeworms depends on the intestines of the cows for their food and nutrients. Some parasites live outside the body of the host like that of the mosquito. The mosquito is a parasite that lives outside the body of the host. It sucks blood from the skin of man which is the host. Some parasites can cause diseases. 
bacteria, and other microscopic organisms live inside the body of the host and can cause diseases like dengue and pneumonia. Aside from the symbiotic relationship, other relationships in our ecosystem also exist. These are called non-symbiotic relationships. Non-symbiotic relationships are interactions of organisms that live apart from one another. Examples of non-symbiotic relationships are competition and predation. Competition is a relationship in which two or more organisms need the same thing to survive. The competition can be between the same species, which is called intraspecific competition, or different species, which is called interspecific competition. The organisms are competing or fighting for common resources like food, water, sunlight, shelter, or even mates. An example of competition is among these plants. These individual plants are competing for light exposure, temperature, humidity, pollinators, soil nutrients, and growing space. Another non-symbiotic relationship is called predation. It is a predator-prey relationship. The predator is an organism that feeds on another organism called prey. The process of consumption involves the killing of the prey. Carnivorous animals such as frogs, snakes, owls, and eagles kill and eat other animals that are rich in proteins and fats. Take a look at this example. Which is the predator and which is the prey? Correct! The snake is the predator since it consumes the frog, and the frog is the prey since it is the one that is being eaten by the snake. And that ends our discussion about the different ecological relationships that exist in our environment. All of the interactions that are occurring in our environment are needed to maintain a balanced ecosystem. See you on our next science lesson. Ag-amazing!